Hey, welcome to the Trucking with John D channel. And in this video, I want to talk about uh, the lease purchase calculator that you can download from OIDA.com. I want to show you, walk you through how to use it and how you can get an estimate of what your uh, net income. I want to show you what your net income might be after your uh, expenses. Now, this is uh, all estimates because it will vary from company to company. It will vary. From, it will vary by how you run. It will vary by what time of the year it is. So I'm just going to put uh, hypothetical numbers in here, and then you you can uh, download the calculator yourself and, and put in the numbers that work for you, or put in the numbers that work for the company that you're considering. So we're going to leave these that come from Oida.com. So you see the compensated miles is 120,000 miles a year which is uh, 10,000 miles a month and then uncompensated miles is 10 percent and that puts your total miles for that year at 132,000 miles the uncompensated miles is your miles that you're not getting paid for you know that, that's what uncompensated means and this could be the miles you put on your truck getting home this could be the miles that are unpaid you know how they'll say this trip pays you know x amount of x amount per mile for 350 miles but in reality it takes 380 290 miles to actually get there so that, those additional miles over the three are compensated so this estimates that you'll do 10 percent of that those kind of miles every year which comes up to 132,000 miles the compensation rate a dollar 75 a mile the rate, I'm, I'm saying this rate includes the fuel surcharge. When you talk to the company, you can find out what the fuel surcharge is, or you can estimate it, or how much fuel surcharge they pay, and then add that to your compensation rate per mile. That way the numbers will uh, make more sense. But uh, we'll go with a lower number, just because your average company that pays by the mile aren't usually paying a dollar seventy five a mile. So we'll go with a dollar twenty per mile, which includes the future surcharge of let's say fourteen cent, twenty cent, you know, it depends. Um all right, so you push enter and like you how you saw, you change depending on which program you're using, I'm using open office calculator. You can use uh Excel or any spreadsheet type software to, to uh, look to view this file to, to modify this file so basically you put in the number you want to change when you click on like you saw the box the yellow ones are the ones that can be modified so you click on whatever you want to change and then up here you can put in whatever number you want three dollars a mile oh oops I wish three dollars a mile you know so whatever you want to change it to so we'll change it back to a dollar twenty a mile excess mile limit Per year, this is with some leases, just like when you lease a car, uh, written into the lease is when you turn in the car, they don't want the car to have, let's say, more than 50,000 additional miles on it over the term of your lease. Uh, when you lease the truck, those terms might also be in there. This is something you might have to pay attention to when you're looking over your lease contract where you can't exceed a certain amount of miles per year. So if your lease or when you talk to a company, ask them about that. And if they say, you know, you can't go over 100,000 miles a year, 80,000 miles a year, 120,000 miles a year, they put that in here as far as like, uh, let's say if you go 120,000 miles a year, you put that in this box and then what that rate is, what the penalty is. Is it 3.035 cents penalty, whatever it is, you put that in this box. I'm going to leave it blank because... That might not be a, a thing you have to worry about. The fuel price per gallon, this is the national fuel price average, the average national fuel price, which I think right now is $2.45. And then your average mile per gallon for the truck that you might be getting or the truck you already have, or yeah, the truck, the average, the average miles per gallon that you think the truck you will be driving might get. So 
you know, I've driven Volvos, most of the like, Freightliners and Volvos, and the Volvos have gotten the best gas mileage I, that I've driven personally. Um, but I think a safe average would be 6.8 with today's modern trucks, the aerodynamic trucks, the, the, all the systems on them to make it a little bit more fuel efficient. So I think 6.8 is a good average. 6.5 will be a low end average, while 7.8, which it was, would have been a high in average so 6.8 i think is a good medium you know as long as you're not doing a bunch of idling as long as you're not you know <laughs> doing jack rabbit starts and over over revving and all that stuff 6.8 is what you probably should be averaging if you have a decent truck so that'll put your fuel price that'll put your fuel price per mile at 36 cents uh 36 cents a mile so this is how much it's cost you per mile at that miles per gallon to, for fuel. And that puts your fuel cost per year at $47,000. All right. Okay, your maintenance reserve, we're going to leave that the way it is, five cents a mile. That'll give you a maintenance reserve escrow of 6600 and weekly lease payment, I want to change that. Let's go with a payment of. Now, if you lease it through a company, this is typically what, you know, you, yeah. If you lease it through a company, you probably should expect a payment between 350, as low as 350 to 400 to 500 or more per week. So we're just going to go with 400. Push enter. That puts your annual lease payment of $28,800. All right. So your gross compensation, compensated mile as compensation is $144,000. And then the excess mile penalty of $4,620. Let's, let's put a zero in here. I don't know why. Oops. Yeah. Let's make all that zero because... Okay, that puts your gross compensation at 144,000 miles. Miles. All right. So now we're gonna get into your variable costs or your direct costs. I mean, some of these are variable, some of these are fixed, but your direct costs. Like I said, your fuel is 47,559 a year. Your maintenance reserve is 6,600 a year. That might be more or less. You know, you have to adjust that depending on what you feel comfortable with. If you have an older truck with high miles, you might want to increase that. If you have a newer truck with low miles and a warranty, you probably should leave it the same or maybe decrease it a little bit. It just depends on what you what makes you feel comfortable. But when something happens, be prepared. You know, if you don't have a warranty, be prepared to uh, cough up some money. So let's, so theoretically, we're saying that you spent $6,273 that year or per year on repairs. This may or may not happen, but you are going to have uh, maintenance, you, you know, oil changes. You're going to have filter changes, you know, stuff like that. So some of these, some repairs or maintenance is going to have to happen every year, regardless of whether you break down or not. So you always want to have a fund set up for that. You don't want to wait until it happens to try to come up with the money. You want to always have it on hand. All right. Uh, track the tires. That's at a thousand dollars a year you know depending on how you drive that's probably a safe number you know it just depends you know you, you might not you need to replace you might not need to re, need to replace all the tires every year you might have to replace one or two four you know five I mean, four at a time it just depends on uh, eight at a time it just depends on how you're running but if you're saving up a thousand dollars every year, you can also take your tires you know, for emergency repairs. That can also come out of your escrow if you need tires that bad. But you know, we will say we're saying that you are spending a thousand dollars a year on tires. Your Qualcomm rental fee or charge thirteen seventy four. This might be higher or lower depending on the company, or it might not have none at all. Um, your road fuel, property, and highway taxes eighteen sixty four a year. This may be higher or lower or um, None at all, depending on the company. 
and, and where you're running. You may or may not have a loading on loading feed. Like if you're running, excuse me, if you're running flatbed, <clears throat> uh, uh, car hauling, heavy haul stuff like that, you might not have a you, you shouldn't have a loading on loading feed. But if you're running dry van reefer, most well, definitely reefer, you're gonna have a loading. Maybe not a loading fee, but a, a, definitely an unloading fee, typically. Um, so you might want to put what you think that average cost might be. And if you're working for or leasing through a company, they might actually cover or reimburse you off of fees. That just depends on the company. Licenses. This may be high or lower or no cost at all, depending on who you're running with. But we're going to leave these numbers here because... I don't want to. I want. I want to average this on the high end, that way you have a general good idea of what you could be looking at. Permits 579. Like I said, you may not have that fee. The company might provide permits for your charge, or they may charge you for permits. Or might say, hey, you gotta get your own permits. Telephone. This will be your cell phone bill per year. This may be high or low, depending on what you need, what kind of service plan you have. Um. <clears throat> Truck washing. If you like a trick clean truck, this might be a good number. You might need a little set it a little higher. I like my truck being clean. So I will have a higher higher or around about that number for truck washing. But if you don't mind a dirty truck, then you might not have much if any truck washing fees. You might depend on the rain. Fines and tickets. You I've been driving eight years and I've only gotten one ticket and that was only $150. So that depends on how you how good of a driver you are, how you drive, and whether or not you'll have this fine fines or ticket uh, charges. So that puts your direct cost at 68572 uh, Okay, I'm going ahead to insurance. Your physical damage, 2,377. Now, trucking liability, 831. Cargo, 1469. Workers' comp. Occupational insurance, 2015. Now, some of these the company might offer. Some of, some of these, and you won't have to pay. Some of these, you can get under the company's insurance, so you won't have to, and you won't have to pay these. Or you'll pay a, a reduced rate. Or you'll pay an increased rate, depending on your driving record, the kind of truck, and the kind of freight you're hauling. So all these numbers you'll have to research and get on your own. All right, indirect costs. This will be your bookkeeping. If you do your own bookkeeping, then you probably won't have this cost. Only cost you probably will have on the bookkeeping is your uh, is your cost of software. And that's if you paid for a bookkeeping software like uh, QuickBooks, Quicken Books, you know whatever you use. This. Uh, this will, this will go into bookkeeping. If you're paying somebody to keep your books, then you put the number in here, how much it will cost per year. Your meals. If uh, you eat on the road a lot, this might be a good number. You might have to increase it. I break, I, I cook on the road. I bring food to cook. So it's rare that I eat on the road. So Whatever you figure you were spending on groceries for a week on the road, two weeks on the road, a month on the road, depending on how long you are out there, then you'll want to put that average per year in here. Your lodging, like if you break down or you have a layover or whatever, you'll put that number here if you have to or anticipate having to stay out and not sleep in your truck for whatever reason. If there's a breakdown or whatever. And medical insurance, since a uh, company's not covering you, since the company's not covering your medical expenses, you'll have to get your own insurance. So uh, that 3400 a year might be a good number for you, might not be a good number. You might have to increase that. Uh, if, some, if you're covered under your wife or husband's insurance or somebody else's insurance, then, um, of course, you can adjust that as needed. And then you got miscellaneous expenses, and that can cover just, just miscellaneous costs on the road. You need new gloves. You need to go buy a pair of jeans because the company you're trying to pick up at or the shipper tells you that you can't come on the property unless you have long pants on. 
or you might need to buy a shirt because you need to have a long sleeve shirt or you need to buy a new straps if you're flat bitten, new chains. You need to get, you know, stuff that's an emergency out there on the road that you don't anticipate happening. Uh, your placket blew off if you're hauling hazmat freight. You need to buy some new. So all this, all those combined under your miscellaneous expenses, just additional stuff that you'll buy while out on the road for the truck. I'm not talking about uh, souvenirs and stuff or touring while you're out. I'm talking about expenses that relates to the truck or doing the job. And that puts your indirect cost at 14888 your annual lease payment at 2800 and this puts your net income at 33051 after expenses. So is that a good yearly income for you? Well, I'm assuming not because that's less than the company driver makes. So you have to, this is why it's important to research the company you're going to lease on to. This is why it's important to have a low lease, a uh, low truck payment and why it's important to control your costs and try to reduce your costs as much as possible. And there's different ways to do that. Even, you know, one way you can do it, one way you can increase your income is running more miles. 10,000 miles a month is about 2,500 miles a week. So that might be a good number for you if you can, if you think that you can pull that off. And the way an average works is you not will necessarily run 20, 2,500 miles every week, but what you'll have, what will happen is you'll one week you run 2,300, the next week you might run 3,300. So when you average it all out, it, you still meet that number. But but let's say that you can add, let's say you are averaging, so let's say you did additional 30, 10,000 miles a year. Which, you know, is, it is possible. So you did an additional 10,000 miles a year. That puts you at 40,538. Of course, don't forget, this number is before your taxes. This is before you pay your income tax. Um, so you still have to pay your taxes out at 40,538 a year. So really, you probably end up with, what, 31,000? 35,000, 31,000 take home. And don't quote me on that. I'm just throwing a number out there because taxes vary by individual, by situation. Um, and let's say something as simple as let's change this back to 120,000 miles a year, but you found a company that pays better, a company where you can average $1.50 a mile including your fuel surcharge. That puts your gross at 180, 180k without changing anything else. Just a company where you can average $1.50 per mile. You're still averaging the same amount of miles, same amount of expenses, same truck payment, but that puts you at an above average income, 69,051. So just for future reference, that's where you wanna be at a minimum. You wanna be at a minimum of $1.50 per mile. So whatever company you go with, one, they got to have the miles because if you don't have the miles, you can get paid a hundred dollars a mile, and it won't matter. But one, the company has to have the mile, has to have the miles, and two, you have to be able to average a dollar fifty a mile. So how are you going to do that? Well, you're not going to do it getting paid by the mile. The way you're going to do that is getting paid a percentage of the load. So that because that way you can one, well, not in most cases, but usually. Or you may be able to negotiate the rate to get a little more out of it. And you can average more per mile because you're getting a percentage of the load. So that's where you want to be. When you're looking at a lease purchase, you want to look at a company that's paying a percentage and a company where you can pick your own freight. That way you can, because you you only you know your costs, only you know your expenses, only you know what you need to do to meet your truck payment, you know, basically meet the demands of your business. In the banana, in demands of your personal life, so you know that you need to make, let's say, fifty thousand dollars a year at a minimum. So only you can dispatch yourself in a way that will, where you can meet that minimum. Anything above that is a bonus. So if that was, if this is your situation hypothetically, and all you, what you need as a base, 
it was fifty thousand a year, you and made a bonus of nineteen thousand fifty one dollars a year. And that nineteen thousand fifty one a year, you could put away. You could put away in the savings, or you can invest that into something else as a into a side income stream, another business, or you could just put it away to either help pay off your truck faster or save it up if you have a a, a, a a, a, a balloon payment at the end of your lease, you can save that up, that additional money, so you can pay off that balloon payment at the end, or use that additional money as a down payment on a truck, or to buy a, a truck straight up cash. That way, you won't even have a payment at all next time around. So, I'm, uh, I put a link below this video where you can download this calculator. Uh, if you got some value out of this video, like it, share it. Subscribe to my channel to get more updates like this. And uh, yeah, check out the link below this video. I also got a bonus link in the description box. Check that out. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon.